Alright guys, we're going to turn our attention back to the battlefield and take a look at a couple Confederate victories at Fredericksburg and Chancellorsville. By this time, Lincoln has replaced McClellan with General Ambrose Burnside, who's a slightly different kind of general, a bit more aggressive, less of a planner. Burnside's going to attack an elevated fortified position of Confederate troops at Fredericksburg, ignoring advice of his generals to outflank the Confederate army by attacking further downriver. They're going to march through town after crossing the river on pontoon bridges and across a mile of open ground against an elevated fortified position in just a devastating battle. The great assault came two days later on December 13th. Federal forces advanced toward Marie's Heights. Lee could not believe the enemy would be so foolish. His artillery covered all the approaches. Four lines of riflemen waited behind a stone wall that ran along the base of the hill. General and officer assured James Longstreet a chicken could not live in that field when we open on it. How beautifully they came on. Their bright bayonets glistening in the sunlight made the line look like a huge serpent of blue and steel. We could see our shells bursting in their ranks, making great gaps, but on they came as though they would go straight through us and over us. Now we gave them canister and that staggered them. A few more paces onward and the Georgians in the road below us rose up and let loose a storm of lead into the faces of the advancing brigade. The brilliant assault of their Irish brigade was beyond description. We forgot they were fighting us, and cheer after cheer at their fearlessness went up along our lines. General George Pickett. It was suicide. They came forward, one man said, as though they were breasting a storm of rain and sleet. Faces and bodies half turned to the storm, shoulders shrugged. The Irish brigade got within 25 paces of the wall. The men of the 24th Georgia who shot them down were Irish too. A Union officer watching from a church steeple saw brigade after brigade charge the stone wall. They seemed to melt, he said, like snow coming down on warm ground. They still believed that to take a position you masked your men and moved up and gave them the bayonet. Well, there were practically no bayonet wounds in the Civil War, much more than there were in the First World War or the Second. They, they never came in that kind of contact, or at least very seldom came in that kind of contact. But they still thought that to mass their fire, they had to mass their men. So they lined up and marched up toward an entrenched line and got blown away. Fourteen assaults were beaten back from Marie's Heights before Burnside decided it could not be taken. Nine thousand men fell before the Confederate guns. More credit for valor is given to Confederate soldiers. They're supposed to have had more elan and dash. Uh, actually, I know of no braver men in either army than the Union troops at Fredericksburg, which is a serious defeat. But to keep charging that wall at the foot of Marie's Heights after all the failures they've been, and they were all failures, uh, is a singular instance of valor. Watching from above, even Robert E. Lee was moved. It is well, he said, that war is so terrible. We should grow too fond of it. Burnside's going to end up getting replaced by General Joseph Hooker, who will lead the Union Army through Fredericksburg, to a field near Chancellorsville. Here he's going to be ambushed by Stonewall Jackson, and Jackson is going to end up getting accidentally shot by his own troops, but the battle is a victory for the Confederate Army. Eager to fight on, Jackson rode out between the lines that evening to scout for a night attack. When he turned back toward his men, nervous Confederate pickets opened fire. Two of his aides fell dead. Jackson was hit twice in the left arm. His shattered arm was amputated the next morning. Lee was horrified. He has lost his left arm, he said, but I have lost my right. Thanks, guys, for paying attention. Hopefully you took good notes, and we'll see you tomorrow.